why do hematomas or seromas develop? Ah, well, they develop totally different. How and why do hematomas or seromas develop? Okay, what are they? An oma is a mass of something. So a carcinoma, that's the one everyone's heard of, is a blob of cancer. A hematoma, hematoma, is a blob of hemat or blood. A seroma is a blob or a mass or a collection of serous fluid. We are not imaginative in medicine. The, the <laughs> medical language, they say when you start medical school, you learn a new language and you do, but it's kind of, I mean, it's, it's kind of like German. If you know German, where you sort of, you, you make 18 words by putting five different words together in different ways. Or, and, you, just, or you just call it your own name. Or you can just do that. Um, or if name it after yourself. Yeah, exactly. Name yeah, after yeah, like the fob line. Loving the fob line. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I didn't name it after myself. Someone named it after me for me, which is kind of you can't call you can't like you can't call yourself an entrepreneur. Someone has to call it for you. Can't um, anyway. Right. <laughs> so so I, I digress. How and why do hematomas or seromas develop? Okay, so that's what they are. A hematoma is a collection of blood, and ultimately, it's blood that continues bleeding internally and is trapped so i've done my stuff we've been operating then we closed you up thinking all is well then bleeding has continued and it's now in a contained space so it enlarges um and so the obvious question is well why didn't you stop the bleeding you numpty and the reason we didn't stop the bleeding is we thought we had but bleeding can then happen one of the things that happens when you're under general anesthetic is that your blood pressure drops your blood pressure is low. In fact, sometimes we even ask the anaesthetist to lower your blood pressure a bit further to make the operation easier for us. Because when your blood pressure is a bit lower, you don't bleed, which is great. However, one of those things that happens when you wake up is your blood pressure goes up. So blood vessels that weren't bleeding because your blood pressure was low make us not spot them because we don't spot the ones that aren't bleeding. And then your blood pressure goes up and it starts bleeding, but you've woken up by now and that this is a recipe for a hematoma. So what we usually do is uh, I will say to the, I'll be closing up and I'll just say to the anaesthetist, closing up, or I'll say, can you raise the blood pressure or something like that, which is their cue to start raising the blood pressure so that they know, so that we all know that any bleeding that's going to happen is going to happen now while you're still anaesthetized, I've, I've still got you open and I can spot it and I can stop it. So that's how it can happen. That's how we should avoid it. But with the best will in the world, it could happen. Um, seroma is a totally different beast whatsoever. Seroma is what comes out of the drains. It looks like blood. When you look at, if you've ever had a drain and you look at the drain bottle, it looks like it's full of blood, but it's not full of blood. It's full of serous fluid, which is blood stained. Even a few drops of blood will make it look like it's totally full of blood. A bit of blood goes a long way, but it's different. And sometimes if someone's had a seroma for a long time and uh, there's no more bleeding whatsoever, then you see the true colour of the seroma, which is this kind of golden, um, kind of yellowy, clear coloured stuff. It is like blister fluid. It's caused by essentially by inflammation and moving. If you think about if you were to have a blister on your skin and you see this kind of yellowy stuff that comes from it, or a superficial burn perhaps, or really bad sunburn, it's the same kind of stuff. There's evidence as to um, what causes it and what seems to cause it is inflammation, infection can cause it, but also movement and sheer forces and movement. So a lot of the strategies that we take to prevent seromas prevent that movement. We ask you not to move around too much. Light exercise, but don't go crazy. We quilt, we stitch down the skin to the deep surface to hold it in place and stop it moving too much. That's what quilting sutures are all about. And even when we put drains in, the drains aren't just to take the seroma away. The drains are actually usually on suction and that suction holds everything down so that um, you're, you're not getting too much movement. And it also reduces the space into which a seroma can develop. So that's hematomas and seromas, how they develop and how we try to prevent them. Fabulous. Cool.